Good evening all. Good evening. So we're going to be commenting the first quarter of 2021. You've already read, received and read, I should say, the uh, shareholders letter, number 102, which is an exceptional uh, results. I hope you've been able to, to look at it in detail. We're going, to add, we're going to go over that and answer your questions. So I would ask, invite you to ask your questions under the questions section and not the chat section. And we're now going to make a presentation fairly, uh, a fairly succinct uh, presentation. Um, and to allow our shareholders and employees, of course, uh, to ask their questions at the end of the webinar. So I'm going to start with a tribute to the ALO uh, employees who, who are completing their move at the moment. Uh, uh, during a very busy time with a higher turnover. And this has meant we've needed bigger premises for them. And this week, they're, they're, they're moving. It's really tricky thing, very tricky operation. So thank you for that commitment. Thank you for, to the employees from other uh, affiliate subsidiaries who are helping them. And also to the IT team who are doing all they can do to get them reconnected as soon as possible. So really thank you to, to all of those people and it's obviously an opportunity to congratulate them on their on ALO on their great performances uh, you'll see they've achieved uh, increase in turnover at 150% which is quite remarkable so before we look at the figures we we'll just re remind you of the context remember last year January February uh, good good growth around 10% growth in 2020. And then uh, in the middle of March, uh, we had this sudden drop in turnover, collapse in turnover, which of course affected the figures for the first quarter. So we had, in fact, in the end, stable turnover uh, by the end of the first quarter of 2020. So for this year, we, we, we feel it's better to uh, refer back to uh, 2019 to compare our figures. And so you'll see that in this uh, summary table that Nicola is going to put up for us. You'll see we've simplified the, the figures from the uh, shareholders letter, letter uh, two main uh, channels DIY and pro so in in the over the two year period for DIY we've got 0.6 percent period increase which is before uh, reflects in that market for my uh, superstores and e-commerce And we think that our subsidiaries in those years have done be better than the market generally. So good performance for the pro channel. So we've got almost 27% progress in growth in turnover, and that's exceptional. And overall, we've got a progression over that combined for those two channels of 28.7% between 2019 and 2021. So that's quite exceptional. Great commercial logistics performance from our teams. And you can imagine how difficult it was for our staff uh, during these uh, chaotic periods. Now, on the next slide, we'll see the different quarters. And you can see in this graph how uh, this first quarter of uh, 2021 is completely exceptional. We've never had growth like that. I don't think we've ever had that uh, in my memory uh, in Thermador Group. Uh, 
So that really is a, reflects the situation, quite exceptional situation. So some important points for its first quarter, 2021. So first of all, the situation is quite similar to last the uh, last quarter of last year. The French people are focusing still on their homes, their gardens, their swimming pools. And so all those purchases are uh, concerned with home improvement, uh, garden improvement, of course, pumps, for example, swimming pools, uh, too. Jetly also sell, as well as Aelo, they sell uh, single equipment. So they've obviously seen good performance through that quarter. What's new? First of all, strong increase in prices. We anticipated this. So we announced a first uh, rise in prices to our customers. But that won't be enough. There'll be a second increase. And in some cases, that may be above 10%. So they're substantial increases we're expecting. So these price rises plus uh, price rises in container shipments and also the rarity of those shipments means that there's the risk of stockouts. There has been stockouts amongst our, our competitors and also has seen uh, precautionary purchasing by our customers. So in a way, this turnover may be considered slightly um, inflated in the sense that we have one um, business from our, some of our customers. It may only be temporary, of course. Okay, FNAS, and that's the syndicate that uh, the union that brings together uh, distributors in sanitation, heating, air conditioning and piping. They show uh, progression uh, since June and Brico Brief, which is really the DIY uh, uh, customers, uh, they continue to show spectacular figures since uh, To the end of February, it was still up 11.3%. Another aspect, aspect is energy renovation. This has uh, been a real booster for Thermidor, our subsidiary Thermidor. And you'll see that in our uh, um, uh, shareholders' letters. Then they grow, grew by over 50%. For Thermador over a period of two years, and that's because it's one of the group's biggest subsidiaries. That's quite exceptional. And so you see on the table that uh, in the uh, shareholder letters, you see the the direct impact of renovation on that uh, particular subsidiary, Thermador Group. Thermidor, sorry, which is one of our oldest subsidiaries. Okay, what about prospects? So there are some positive, some negative uh, prospects. The impact of the third lockdown for the moment is really uncertain. We don't know what's going to happen, in particular in terms of DIY superstars, because some superstores, because some of them have, have had to close, those of over 10,000 square meters. And they will depend on the government measures. The lockdown lockdown is going to last four or five weeks. Uh, we know that our customers can adjust to these situations, but that will definitely mean a drop in t in purchasing for them. So energy re renovation and the French regulation, uh, thermal French regulation RE twenty twenty, will certainly continue to promote the purchase of, of uh, goods produced by Thermador, uh, sold by Thermador, sorry. 
all accessories are linked to heat generation that use renewables, so heat pumps, for example, uh, solid mass uh, heaters, also uh, solar systems, solar heating systems, and all the accessories associated with those will benefit. Also, therm PB tube and thermocombs products, and we have ideas for developing their product ranges. However, on the downside, the new build housing market is down, continues to be down, both in terms of uh, requests for planning permission and new building starts. And it's still going down, and we, we don't think it's hit the bottom yet, but we think that it will bottom out this year. And then we'll see improvement after that during this year. Two companies in the group are PBTube and Thermocome, who are particularly affected by that market. And then internationally, our subsidiary Saivco, who got good performance in the first uh, quarter, is still unable, be, of course, to visit its customers abroad. And we're just waiting to be able to get back to a normal uh, type of business uh, relations relationships where we can actually visit them. So, uh, for Sodeca, this is based in Belgium, and have salespeople in Holland, uh, Germany, and uh, Belgium. There's a limit in terms of visiting, so of course that uh, has impacted the business. And Sodeco is one of the companies that's down because its uh, activity is really dependent on big projects for turnkey products for com for factories, for example. And uh, there's a big variation between 2021 and 2020 when there were a lot of uh, major projects. Twenty twenty one, we'll see lots of new projects. ILO, for example, with the move, they've got a logistics warehouse of over five thousand eight hundred square meters, which will allow ILO to co cope with the growth. It's uh, growth that it's reported under the best possible conditions, working conditions. So that began in 2020 and will finish in 2021 for this new uh, warehouse and uh, uh, work on the new offices or existing offices too. So there's good prospects for that, that company. Then Accelera, they work in ventilation products and was created in 2013 also needs additional space to develop its product ranges. And so we've uh, started the construction of a 3,000 square meter uh, logistics area with offices for the XLS staff. So that'll be during 2021 as well. So Deepa Rousseau. So Rousseau, we bought in 2018. And the idea is to merge Deepra and also, and so we're working on on that merger project. And one of the challenges is to be able to provide them with an ELP system, which uh, uh, that is able to take into account the different working methods of those two companies to find a sort of compromise. So we started working on that IT project on the IE to find the right ERP. And we've, and we've discussed with uh, Deep, Deeper Russo staff and with the uh, Thermador group uh, IT, IT experts. And then FG Inux. So we bought that in 2017. And they uh, sell uh, stainless steel uh, connectors and they rent logistics space 
and we've decided to move their logistics to Saint-Quentin-Valavier. A lot of our subsidiaries, of course, are based here in Saint-Quentin-Valavier, and the idea for this project, which will run over 21-22, to uh, provide them with an 8,000 square meter uh, warehouse and allow them to grow into that. So, as well as this property project, there's also an, Im an improvement uh, logistics enhancement project uh, in order to provide a better and a more efficient service to customers. And so that will affect uh, France and export. So we're looking for logistics systems which uh, uh, allow us to perform to those levels. And there's a study in progress, uh, which is run overseen by the su supply chain director. And we're looking at different solutions to optimize our uh, logistics. And then PB Tube and Thermocom, back to uh, Guillaume. Just a word about FG Inox, but first, and then move to Saint-Quentin-Falivier. That'd be a, a way for us to accelerate the sale of their products internationally, because that'll get them closer to the platforms to be able to, uh, and to be nearer to Saivco to organize their exports. So PB tube and Thermocomb, we've uh, got some minor uh, logistics uh, synergies, but the priority is to work on developing new products, new product ranges. And in particular, we're developing uh, radiating uh, ceiling systems, uh, heating and cooling systems for ceilings and floors. And they're very efficient in when, it, when it comes to cooling buildings. So as the climate changes, of course, and uh, with the demands of the French authorities to provide uh, energy efficient buildings, we're really working on that uh, product range. We think we can gain some substantial market share in the uh, uh, cooling systems for such buildings. And that's a, a major exercise that's underway in order to cover all the market niches that may be available to us. So, those are our prospects. We've tried to be as quick as we can this evening uh, to, to give you some time to give, ask us some questions. And because we have some illustrious, uh, illustrious investors uh, amongst our listeners tonight, we've got some questions. Claude, uh, who knows us very well, and asks how we're going to be able to pass on the price rises of raw materials uh, and also the price in uh, container prices, how we're going to pass those on. Well, quite simply, we're going to uh, pass those price rises on to our customers because they know uh, very well that we have no choice. Uh, they too import and they know they've, they're familiar with the, these problems themselves when they buy. They buy metals, copper, aluminum and steel and steel has gone up very substantially in a few months and of course we have to pass those, uh, those price rises on I'm saying to our customers uh, it's it's an obligation for the financial balance the equilibrium of our company, of course. We've had one rise. Uh, there's going to be a second one. There may even be a third rise in September. It depends on how inflation uh, progresses. And so when I was reading in the Echo this week that inflation in France was only 0.6% in March, I really think that's going to really rise in the in the weeks ahead because we see price rises on uh, on the 
materials we buy. Yes, we're talking about the customers. And yes, of course, we will pass on those prices, price rises to our customers based on real uh, facts. Given that our customers' priorities is to be able to sell products. So we should talk about the euro-dollar price, uh, which remains favorable to us for the second, first and second uh, quarters. And with our hedging, uh, we're obviously able to protect ourselves, and that will reduce the impact of uh, raw material price increases. In terms of currency, it's fairly calm at the moment. It's fairly stable between the euro and the dollar. Last year, it was 1, 12, 1, 13, 1, 14. Now it's nearer to 1, 19, 1, 19. So it's very favorable to our subsidiaries. I've got a question from Xavier, unless you had something else to say. Hi, Xavier. He's an ex-member of Group Thermador, Thermador Group. You remind you of our, uh, the chairman's uh, letter in the uh, unique reference document. I think some of you thought, when you saw the figures on the low stocks, and on certain prices that was the case, we, we saw our customers uh, facing stockouts, and uh, some of their customers came to us, and so some materials that we had in stock uh, were really at the limit or even getting towards stockout. So, very tense situations sometimes for us in terms of stocks. The fact that we've got very broad ranges, product ranges, means we've been able to compensate between different sections of our ranges. But we have to admit that in this beginning, the start of this year, uh, we've had this very unusual stockout situations in Thermada Group. Uh, end of December, our stock levels were positive, and but in fact, in some subsidiaries, our stock levels were too low. I think so. Given uh, the tight level of stocks, and then this new demand really uh, created some problems indeed. I think that we have long-standing uh, suppliers as partners. That does help us in terms of negotiations. Paul's question, uh, uh, loyal to Thormada Group. He wonders whether we can explain this gain in market share because Thermador seems to have reporting performances which are better than the market generally. I think it's more to do, mostly to do with the quality and commitment of our teams, particularly during the, the tense health situation of the past months. And we, uh, uh, we were stable in terms of uh, staff turnover, so we, we've got great commitment. Good stock quality as well. That's uh, that was really key to this success. Quality of stock is also linked to the financial solidity of the group. So I think those are linked, and the cautionary approach of our the group's founders, uh, which gave us good habits. And I think all of that uh, has allowed us during this crisis situation. to make a difference compared to our competitors. Paul says also, are we winning new customers? Yeah. 
some customers uh, with our with our, with our c c competitors uh, came to us and we're going to try and keep them obviously after this uh, crisis is over that's uh, work for our salespeople to convince them to stay with us uh, to continue with the great levels of service in ILO for example ILO stayed open where when its competitors were closed and they won new customers and the question is uh, whether in 2021 these customers are going to stay with them when you see their figures for ILO uh, it looks like they've kept those new customers and they've actually won market share Practically speaking, when a subsidiary is behind in terms of uh, delivering its orders, it's pretty common in the group uh, for our employees to work Saturday morning, for example, to ship stuff. During the three days of, uh, of the ALO move, uh, they obviously uh, got behind in terms of deliveries and, and they will come in on Saturday morning so you see their commitment that's what I'm talking about and that contrib contributes uh, enormously to uh, to their success Key Bosses question will our margins be protected uh, in terms of passing on the uh, price rises the natural buffer of course is our stock and our stock levels are lower than usual. And you say that our stocks have been uh, emptied uh, quite a bit since December when they were already pretty tight. Uh, it's difficult to answer this question because we've almost 80,000 uh, items in on our product list. But I can just tell you that this uh, problem is being delocalized so that each company takes its own decisions, each subsidiary takes its own decisions, its own measures to work with its uh, suppliers and its customers in order to be uh, able to react to the, in the most appropriate way to the, the stock situation and the price situation. And I think maybe uh, we'll have a better idea at the end of the f first half year, end of June, in terms of margins, but it's too early to say, I think. I think we'll have a partial impact, uh, view of the impact in June. Yeah. So, Pierre Bosset? So, does, it, does the new situation bring new opportunities in terms of growth for new products? Or, or ex external uh, growth opportunities. So in terms of new products, we're creating new products all the time. It's a sort of uh, organic growth that we have uh, permanently. And your question is whether the current situation are open, is opening up doors to us. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that. I'm not convinced of that. No, I think we're, I would even say we're focusing on the need uh, to do what we need to do properly to help our, to serve our customers. And it's not easy. So I think that would even actually slows down our, our projects in terms of new products. Um, the product ranges were already set for 2021 in the subsidiaries because we need to put together all the elements of uh, s sourcing, quality and so forth. It's not something we can uh, adjust uh, very, very quickly. We need to be able to, we need to be able to maintain a level of quality for our customers and, and respect deadlines. So I repeat, my, I'm repeating my, I'm repeating myself, but I don't think it really has a big uh, impact in terms of external growth. Second point, 
We said that we were taking a break for 2021. And we said that again at the AGM in, in April, at the beginning of April. So we're still in this position. We're not actively looking for targets, but if uh, an opportunity comes up, uh, we'll look at it. But in 2021, we're still uh, during this break because that allows us to, to onboard our new companies that we bought uh, in 2018, 2019. And that takes time to onboard them. It's a lot of organizational work, of course, and we're looking for synergies and we're trying to do it uh, right. So Pierre, to answer Pierre's question, uh, we're really all about developing, uh, delivering our products today. So I think we're taking a break in terms of developing new products. Xavier, question from Xavier. In terms of recruitment, yeah, we're planning to recruit in 2021. The, the optimistic nature of our uh, subsidiary managers are telling us uh, in their budgets we, we need to recruit. What type of profile are we looking at? Well, all the professions of the group, but salespeople, sedentary office salespeople, traveling salespeople, these are product experts. Those uh, are essential to us. Of course, logistics too, because we've got a big logistics activity. And it's not so easy to find people who who who, who match to that kind of uh, job. So saint quentin felavier is an area which is well known for logistics. It's a real challenge to be able to recruit good uh, order pickers and uh, forklift truck drivers, etc. I would also say uh, that we're recruiting in Belgium because our subs Belgium subsidiaries are looking for buyers uh, in particular. So we're recruiting there. And for us here, the IT teams at Thermodoc Group are now eight strong and we're recruiting more as well. So we're taking on board more and more technologies, uh, both for trade and for 3D, uh, 3D images to show our products. And uh, for that, we'll be recruiting too. Rudolf, I spoke to this morning uh, on the phone, uh, who, who received his uh, uh, unique uh, document, the uh, URD. Uh, if you haven't received your annual report in paper format, do call us. Uh, we will check our database, uh, send you, the, send, you, send out the report to you. So he's asking uh, whether we're dependent upon dependent on imports from China in in containers. Yes, of course, we're partly dependent. But the current context is sufficiently unusual uh, for us not to, to say that this is not a normal situation. When the US started importing again, they massively imported uh, products. Which reduced uh, uh, traffic to other parts of the world, and that created the first crisis. Then there's obviously the Suez Canal uh, incident, uh, which has created products uh, shortages and shortages of uh, containers. But we still got deliveries, of course, uh, arriving. It continues to work perfectly well. It's it's a it's a resilient model. There's no reason that it shouldn't come back to normal fairly quickly. However, of course, with our transporters, we might we might be talking to our transporters to 
to reduce the impact, negative impact. Another element with our transporters, these are long-term partnership, partnerships, of course, with our subsidiaries, which gives us a good level of service quality. And the fact of being regular customers for them means that we we can find better solutions, more suitable solutions. And there's a, there's a regular information flow uh, in order to be able to uh, track containers, for example, and be able to perhaps get advantages with uh, those transporters and get uh, useful uh, information from them. Jean-Pierre asks if the quality and size of our stocks allows us to reduce uh, price hikes. No, my, the answer is no, we won't be able to uh, uh, bypass uh, price hikes, price hikes. So the 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 our purchase prices rise. We have to pass on uh, purchase. We have to pass on prices to our our customers. Because if we don't do that, then our margins will be uh, negatively affected, of course. And. That's what our subsidiaries are doing, even though we've got quite a lot of stock, or a stock of a few months, huh? uh, and a few months, it's, it, it's quickly will, quickly goes by, of course. And it's better to go for one uh, uh, price rise on several applications, uh, uh, rather than do it multiple times on different uh, product lines. And that obviously is waste time wasting. Because there's a lot of work involved, like for example, uh, labeling the products and so forth, prices and so forth. Uh, it, it's better to anticipate and uh, decide on a, a, a single price rise. How did the how did the IT tests go with the hackers? Yeah, that's right. We did talk about that in our communications. We were going to do a test. To, to test our IT security, and that was done. So after that, we've introduced a number of corrective actions. So it reassured us to some extent, because we invested in 2021 to improve our IT systems, and that security audit uh, confirmed us in that uh, strategy to, to to invest in 2021 to remain efficient and effective. Uh, this it's all to do with every, each person's individual uh, action. Uh, a lot of employees are listening to us tonight, uh, and it's important to be able to talk to them. Uh, Please protect your passwords, change your passwords regularly, etc. And I'm sure that a lot of uh, hacking is because of carelessness. And when you get emails from people you don't know, uh, obviously that's uh, one of the, uh, the strategies to, to adopt is to be careful about uh, uh, answering such, uh, clicking on such emails. And so there's a lot of uh, training which will be repeated. Uh, uh, in all the subsidiaries, in order to improve our, our IT security. And I think, as Guillaume says, it's ev it's to do everybody's work, it's everybody's contribution. Gilbert, are we applying uh, price rises to products already in stock? In some cases, yes. When we have uh, increases come from manufacturers, then whatever the size of the stock, we're going uh, pa to pass it on. And we try to keep as close to reality as possible. Jacques Perrin asks if it would be better to uh, put all our buying in Europe in order, in, rather than buying from China. These are subjects that can obviously be dealt with overnight. 
We have partners in Europe, partners in Italy. And we uh, say hello to our Italian listeners. They're very uh, loyal to us. We also have partners in China, perfectly respectable suppliers, and we we've we we trust them. They trust us, and uh, we would always be loyal to our trusting and trusted uh, partners. And there are products that we can buy in China. We can't buy uh, from from Europe. And it's, so it's not as easy as that to be able to to buy in Europe for equivalent or price and equivalent uh, quality. Uh, we ca we can buy we can uh, buy in Europe if the price and the quality is right. So we have two analysts uh, who are following us. Uh, we were just talking about the their share price. Uh, when will the share price be up to 100 euros? Uh, we're not going to comment on the share price. And I, I don't think it's a good idea for for company executives to comment on their own share prices. We'll just, in simple terms, say that the uh, the market uh, reacted well to the publication of results. And I, as I said, the, the, the our shareholders' letters and the information that was in there was quite exceptional. And the analysts uh, weren't expecting such an increase in turnover. They were expecting 104 maybe million, but not 127 that we reported. And we didn't imagine that either. I would, exp I would just, I would tell you, we didn't imagine that would be it would be such a, a uh, such a big high, uh, rise in turnover. In terms of suppliers, do you have uh, at least two suppliers for all product lines? Yes, for the same product reference, uh, it's a bit complicated to buy from two suppliers at the same time because the customer wants exactly the same product, of course, each time he orders. So what we have is we buy from a, r a regular and trusted uh, supplier and we have a backup supplier, of course, if necessary. But it's, uh, it's not systematic, but we do have, yeah, a backup. And our subsidiaries do have very full databases of uh, suppliers to be able to identify product replacements. But for branded products, like Califi or DAB, when we have a, a DAB pump, there's only one uh, DAB pump, there's only one supplier, of course, because it's branded. It's the same for Califi. These are uh, manufacturer's brand products that are asked for by our customers. Um, so we only have one supplier for those products. And that's been the case for years. And of course the risk level is low because they've taken us through this crisis. Jean-Pierre asks about uh, customer uh, receivables and unpaid bills it's still it's pretty stable end of June we had alert about uh, our customer France Bonhomme who'd taken the uh, government uh, guaranteed loan but since then it's, the situation is pretty stable the health crisis 
uh, made us more careful about our exposure to to customers, and we've uh, we asked our uh, subsidiaries to be more active in terms of following up on uh, due uh, invoices. And we've continued to do that into 2021. It's a good exercise, I, I feel. And it makes us more efficient, I think, in terms of our customer uh, supply and customer relations. So what about uh, a visit to our sites? Our sites for our shareholders. As soon as we can do that, we'll do that. We we've done that uh, with private shareholders in the past and institutional investors as well. And I think it's yes, yeah, an interesting exercise. We'll certainly do that when we can. So hopefully during the summer summer months when the weather is better so it can be more outside perhaps it's certainly a project that we have in mind and of course the the completion of some of our buildings it would be better if it uh, coincided with the uh, the end of the the works because uh, it's more difficult to have visits when those works are going on so uh, Gilbert asks about so are you using open air ERP or tiny ERP for customer uh, supplier management we, we do have several different ERPs which is ACE the, edit, the publisher of our uh, software is American and they bought a French ERP, which is used a lot in distribution, in retail. And that corresponded to our activity. A question is whether our uh, German shareholder uh, can help us to make any acquisitions in Germany. Of course, uh, if they can serve as an interface, uh, help us to uh, to be in touch with the yeah, companies in France. Could be a, they could be a cultural interface for us as well because of the language and cultural as aspect and their financial expertise as well. And of course, they're there to help us uh, if we had the any cases, any acquisition projects. Of course, for the moment, we don't have. But if we did have, they will be there to help us, they said. And we have a German on our board, and he also can help us, of course. Our board challenges us regular on our, regularly on our strategies, and, and they help us by by making us think about uh, out of the box. So what about sales by web? It's a question that comes back a lot. From Inoa is a union that uh, regroups all the groups all the uh, uh, DIY uh, sales online. And the pure players represent 14%. But traditional sales sales outlets uh, have got a big portion of the market still. Uh, they're multi-channel, but they're using both web and uh, uh, stores, of course. But it's fourteen percent. It's not such an enormous uh, uh, portion of the market. And in the professional channel too, it it won't be more than forty percent uh, either. So it's uh, ten to seven. Uh, I think we've answered all your questions. If you've got any more questions, uh, please go ahead. If not, uh, we can end this webinar for this evening. And we're not just going to keep talking for the sake of talking. Any more questions? No more questions. 
So, well, thank you for being with us this evening, for being loyal to us as the way you have. And next uh, appointment is the first half year uh, turnover will be reported at the, in the middle of uh, July. Not the, not the 14th of July, that's a bank holiday, but maybe the 15th. So thank you to all. Uh, have a good evening. Have a great weekend. Goodbye.